Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 25th of February. India and Pakistan agree to stop cross border firing along LOC in Kashmir. Afghan President Ghani exudes confidence as talks with Taliban resume. And Sri Lanka Easter attacks probe call for prosecution of ex-president Sirisena. And now for all the details. India and Pakistan's military said on Thursday that they had agreed to stop firing along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir, where such gunfire has been frequent in recent months, often killing or maiming people living in the area. The nuclear-armed neighbours signed a ceasefire agreement along the LOC in 2003, but the truce has been fraying in recent years. After discussions between the Director Generals of Military Operations of India and Pakistan, the two sides agreed to stop firing along the line of control in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. Both sides held discussions over the established mechanism of hotline contact. A joint statement issued by India's Defence Ministry said both sides agreed for strict observance of all agreements, understandings and cease firing along the line of control and all other sectors with effect from midnight of February 24-25. The development comes at a time when a large number of ceasefire violations were taking place along the LOC and violence levels were going up after killing or maiming people living in the area. During the discussions, both sides reiterated that existing mechanisms of hotline contact and border flag meetings will be utilized to resolve any unforeseen situation or misunderstanding. Kashmir has long been a flashpoint between the neighbours, but tension was renewed after New Delhi last August scrapped provisions of Article 370 that gave special status to the region and split it into two union territories. The Indian government on Thursday unveiled new policies for social media and over-the-top platforms, saying the new guidelines will keep an eye on the online content and empower social media users. According to the new rules, platforms must appoint a chief complaint officer and will also have to provide information about the person who first posted the content. Indian government on Thursday unveiled new guidelines for social media and the over-the-top platforms in order to keep an eye on the online content and empower social media users. The new guidelines will require social media platforms to set up a grievance redressal mechanism and appoint executives to coordinate with law enforcement, the country's IT minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said in a press conference. A detailed version of the guidelines by the government is to be published later and take effect three months after that. It is very important that the social media users running into crores should also be given a proper forum for resolution of their grievances within a time-bound manner against the abuse and misuse of social media. This is focus hai we are empowering the ordinary users of social media in this process. This comes as microblogging giant Twitter had recently clashed with Indian government after the authorities had asked it to block several accounts which were involved in instigating the Republic Day violence in the country. Twitter had complied but after a lot of resistance. In news from Pakistan, amid the controversy over irregularities in the Jaskabai poll, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Vice President Maryam Nawaz has accused government agencies of being under pressure of Prime Minister Imran Khan. Maryam said the agencies and PM Khan were together and involved in rigging the elections. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz 
while referring to the controversy over irregularities in the Duska Bipole has accused government agencies under Prime Minister Imran Khan of being involved in rigging the elections. This comes after the Election Commission of Pakistan last week had said in a statement that it suspected that the results of 20 polling stations were falsified. The by-election in the NA75 constituency for the country's National Assembly was marred by violence at a polling station in the Duska constituency. These polling stations ka amla ghaib kar diya aur 14 ghante ke baad subah subah wo amla baajamaat RO ke office mein achanak warid hota hai achanak moolat kaay huye jab unse poocha gya ke 14 ghante tum kaha rahe to koi kehta hai meri enak toot gai thi koi kehta hai mein rasta bhool gya tha Election rigging in Pakistan has occurred at multiple levels with the connivance of state institutions, the establishment, polling officers and political parties and candidates. As Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan concluded his two-day visit to Colombo on Wednesday, he called Sri Lanka a special friend and partner of Pakistan. In a joint communique issued in Colombo, the two sides reaffirmed their commitment to regional peace, security and stability. Pakistan offered a 50 million US dollars new credit line to Sri Lanka for cooperation in the field of defence and security. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday called Sri Lanka a special friend and partner of Pakistan after he concluded his two-day visit to the island nation. Taking to Twitter, Khan paid his heartfelt gratitude to his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajpaksa for the gracious hospitality and warm welcome and agreed that the cooperative ties between the two nations are poised to grow and strengthen. During the visit, Khan held delegation-level meetings with President Gotabaya Rajpaksa and his counterpart Mahinda Rajpaksa. In a joint communique issued in Colombo on the conclusion of Khan's visit to Sri Lanka, the two sides reaffirmed their commitment to regional peace, security and stability. Pakistan offered a 50 million US dollars new credit line to Sri Lanka for cooperation in the field of defence and security. Khan highlighted the opportunities presented by China-Pakistan Economic Corridor for regional economic growth and prosperity and invited Sri Lanka to join it in the context of regional connectivity. During the visit, five MOUs were signed between the two countries. Both countries reiterated their commitment to the principles and objectives of the SARC Charter and stressed the need for SARC member countries to build on convergence for the greater good of the people in the region. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has said that the way has been paved for more serious talks with the Taliban. His remarks came after negotiating teams of Afghan government and the Taliban met earlier this week and agreed to continue negotiations after a month-long break. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani speaking during a meeting with members of the parliament on Wednesday said, that the way had been paved for more serious peace talks with the Taliban. Ghani's remarks came two days after a meeting held between members of the negotiating teams of the Afghan government and the Taliban, which happened after over a month-long break in Doha, reportedly focused on the continuation of the negotiations. Ghani also said that the recent move by the NATO alliance to hold off on a decision about the troop pullout will help the Afghan peace process and sends a big message. Meanwhile, the third meeting of the EU-Afghanistan Special Working Group on Human Rights, Good Governance and Migration on Wednesday reaffirmed support for democratic principles and discussed human rights and fundamental freedoms in the context of the ongoing Afghan peace process and expressed grave concern about the continuing high level of violence in Afghanistan. It stated the protection of civilians, medical and education facilities as well as humanitarian workers cannot wait for peace. The parties stressed that only an immediate cessation of violence would restore confidence in the sincerity of the Taliban for a political settlement to end the war. In news from Sri Lanka, following a probe into the series of coordinated Easter bombings in 2019 that killed 279 people, 
Investigators have found that the ex-Sri Lankan president, Maitripala Sirisena, should be prosecuted on the grounds of negligence along with his intelligence chiefs. Sirisena, who left office last year, was found to have been negligent by an investigation he set up five months after the Islamic militant attacks. A presidential commission of inquiry report on Tuesday claimed that the Indian intelligence had warned officials about the suicide bombing attacks following a tip-off at least 17 days earlier. And Sirisena, who was likely informed by his intelligence officers, refrained to heed the warnings. Sirisena, now a ruling party legislator, has previously denied any knowledge of the warnings and made no comment about the report. A local jihadist organization, National Tawheed Jamaat and the Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the series of blasts in April 2019. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli will not step down but will let Parliament decide his fate instead. His aide has said a day after the Supreme Court rejected Oli's move to dissolve the parliament. Experts say a power struggle is now imminent among Nepal's communist leaders and uncertainty could last for weeks. Nepal's embattled Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli will not resign but let parliament decide his fate instead. His aide Sure Thapa said on Wednesday, a day after the Supreme Court rejected his decision to dissolve the parliament and call early elections. The Himalayan nation has been in political turmoil since December, when Oli suddenly dissolved the lower house of parliament, citing internal rift with Pushp Kamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal, leaders of rival faction of his ruling party. Thousands of members of the anti-Oli faction took out a massive victory rally in Kathmandu on Wednesday, to celebrate the court ruling which called the abrupt dissolution unconstitutional. They said they rejected his autocratic style of functioning and he should now resign over his inability to govern. Lawmakers opposed to PM Oli are now holding talks to decide their next move. Analysts said a power struggle was imminent among Nepal's communist leaders and uncertainty could last for weeks. A farmer from India's southern Karnataka state is growing rare yellow watermelons scientifically. Basavraj Patil is earning good profit from the scientifically cultivated yellow watermelons and believes that farmers in India should bring diversity in their crop production now. A farmer in India's southern Karnataka state is growing yellow watermelons scientifically in a bid to diversify crop production in India. Basavraj Patil is a graduate from Korakali village in Kalaburaki who has collaborated with local and supermarkets in the city to sell his produce. Patil is earning good profits from the scientifically cultivated watermelons and believes that farmers should now diversify crop production in order to earn more profits. I have a concept of yellow watermelon. I have a farmer who has a yellow watermelon. I have a watermelon. I have a special one. I a restriction for the keeping quality and sweetness. The yellow watermelons have a green rind similar to the red ones, however their flesh is yellow. Watermelons scientifically known as Citrullus lanatus were originally domesticated in Africa. Today the fruit is highly cultivated worldwide with over 1000 varieties. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.